I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Jim Garrett with Harmon International. And Jim, so that I don't butcher your job title, uh, tell us tell us your job title with Harmon. Yeah, I, uh, yep. My name is Jim Garrett. I am the Senior Director of Product Strategy and Planning for the Luxury Audio Business Unit. Takes two business cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Well, cool. Well, listen. So the the reason we're here. You know, obviously, uh, you guys had some big news this week. It is the 50th anniversary of Mark Levinson, and it is a brand that is iconic to high-end audio, as as any in the in the history of high-end audio. Uh, certainly, you know, I cut my teeth uh, reading and listening to Levinson products, you know, over the past couple decades. And so, the 50th anniversary is a big deal, and you guys have marked the occasion with some really cool product launches. And tell us a little bit about the uh, the anniversary and just a kind of a brief summary of the product launches. Yeah, I like you. I, you know, I grew up with these products, so to uh, be the person responsible for the product roadmap has uh, been kind of a, a really cool thing for me as a career. Uh, I, I love this this brand. I love these products. And for any brand, I think in this day and age, to make it to a 50th anniversary is a pretty big deal. And we want to spend the entire year celebrating here in 2022. We used the opportunity of CES here this past Tuesday to make a couple of big announcements uh, of how we're going to take the brand into the next 50 years. And I think probably the most surprising of those was our uh, number 5909 headphones, which I do have uh, a beautiful pair of those here with me. So we'll share those with you Very guys nice. here. This is a phenomenal pair. I think really the best wireless ANC headphone on the market. Uh, in addition, they can, of course, be used uh, in a passive mode with our home products. And in, in our 50 series and our, or, I'm sorry, our 500 series and our 5000 series, Mark Levinson products, we already had our main drive headphone circuitry in those. So we think we had one of the best headphone preamplifiers on the market. Now we've got a great headphone that goes with it. And of course, you can untether it. It's battery powered. You can take it out. So it's really the first product that gets Mark Levinson out of the home and on the go with a true uh, Mark Levinson DNA baked into that headphone, both in the sound quality, the design, the fit, the comfort, all those things. So that was, a, uh, I think, again, probably the most surprising announcement that we had on Tuesday. Um, at the opposite end of the spectrum is that little beast that's uh, sitting back here behind me, and that would be the ML50. As we looked at how do we want to mark a momentous occasion like a 50th anniversary, we wanted to do a limited edition product. We know that we, you know, we make I think some of the best audio components available on the market at any price, but we're certainly known for our amplifiers. Uh, as a avid historian of all of the brands that I'm responsible for, we took the opportunity to kind of go back in the history and look at some of the most iconic products that we'd had and kind of bake some of those details into this one. So this was the other uh, big announcement from Tuesday. I think uh, a really spectacular product. So I'm excited to have the chance to tell you about it. Yeah, well, you know, when I saw the press release come out and I saw the photos and I read the press release, I think what was initially just so cool to me was that you guys really paid homage to the old products. You know, the, 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 the red lights from the 53, the outrigger feet, from the 33 and 33H, but the big one to me were the handles from the number 20. And I think that product had three iterations, the number 20, the number 20.5, and the number 20.6. And that That's was correct. such, those amplifiers were such just iconic products for Mark Levinson. And when I saw the the handles on the new ones, gosh, it just, it just, it brought back memories. And I thought it was just a, a, an excellent design cue that you guys included. So the ML50. So tell us, tell us about the ML50. I know that it's limited to a hundred pair, and I know that it is therefore a limited edition product. I would imagine they're going to go pretty quick. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the, the the development of those and how you guys decided to, you know, put those design cues from the older products into the limited edition anniversary edition. Yeah. So as you stated, so this is a limited edition uh, amplifier package. So it's a monaural amplifier. So the package, of course, contains two of them, as well as an accessory kit that has the power cords and all of the other accoutrement that goes with uh, the amplifier package there. 
And um, that is limited to 100 pair globally. And when those are gone, they're gone. So I think there's something very special to it from that standpoint. As we looked at what was the product going to be, again, we knew we wanted to do an amplifier. It's kind of, you know, something again that we're known very well for incredible amplifiers. I thought it would be really cool to be able to kind of put some of those details into it to really make this something special. When you get to 50 years, it's like, well, let's mark the occasion by kind of looking back at how we got to where we are. Uh, you can go back and kind of easily pick out those most important amplifiers that came from our history, right? And I think when you look at this one, the name ML50, right? Everything that we have currently is based on the current scientific numbering scheme that we use for the names. So we've got our 500 series and our 5000 series. Well, this is ML50. That in itself pays tribute back to our first product, uh, first amplifier rather with the ML2. Uh, the 50, of course, denoting 50 years. So the name of it in itself was back there to the ML2, uh, the first monoil amplifier that we had. Um, that amplifier, of course, had handles on it. The one that followed, the number 20, uh, probably as, as you're moving through our history, the next important monoil amplifier that we had, that piece had angled handles. They were black. Of course, the entire front of the unit was black at that time, but that was really where the inspiration for these handles came from. They are functional, of course, because this amplifier weighs like 115 pounds or something like that, and it's fairly nose heavy because the toroidal power supply is at the front end. So they're not just there because we wanted pretty handles on the front. They are functional. <laughs> this is a two-man operation to move this thing around. So you've got to set uh, the, the big handles on the front, and there's another set of handles on the rear. So that came from the number 20s. And as you mentioned, the 20.5 and 20.6, which were the upgraded versions that followed on through that. The foot design really came out of the 300 series. Uh, when I was selling the brand at retail, that's uh, the products that were new at the time, the uh, 333, 332, 331 amplifiers. And I think as everyone remembers that design, they had a fairly large outrigger foot that kind of came out to the edges of the heat sinks. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was very much a part of the design. And when you got to the reference pieces, the 33 and 33H, it was just the same thing there kind of scaled up. So they had these big stable looking feet. So we wanted to do that. The current products all have smaller uh, inboard round feet. So we wanted to put a, a large foot out to the side. We took the opportunity then to kind of amp up <laughs> the design of the product by making that a, a mechanically isolated vibration dampening foot. So there's some cool science going on inside the foot itself to help isolate the amplifier from the surface it's on. But from a visual standpoint, they very much follow the shape of the front panel uh, up here. They come all the way out to the edge of the heat sink. So it mimics what we had in the 300 series. Um, you mentioned the front panel. This has a fully, uh, well, a glass insert that takes up the majority of the central section of the unit. And that's a callback to the number 53, which was the most referen uh, recent reference amplifier we had. So this has a glass panel, a backlit uh, red Mark Levinson logo that's on the front. It just adds uh, some nice appeal, I think, to the front of the product. There's a new power button with the light ring around it, which comes out of the 5000 series. So there's a look kind of elements of a little bit of everything there. Okay. Those things all kind of take you through the generations, right? ML2, number 20, number 33 and 33H, and a number 53. So there's elements of each of those products baked into the design. I think that's a pretty cool thing that kind of wraps the history up in there. But to take it to the next level is the glass top panel. When we take any of these products to the show, we take the top covers off. Everybody's got the cameras down inside. These units are so beautiful on the inside from the way the circuit boards are laid out. Just the design is absolutely gorgeous. And so we said, well, let's put a glass top on this piece so that we can highlight the beauty of the inner circuit designs on it. And then to add a little more drama to that, uh, it has internal LED lighting so you can see it. Uh, it is set with uh, red lighting right now. And that really kind of allows you to look inside, see the large power supply up front, all of the amplifier uh, output stages, the input stage. It's a really beautiful design. And I think when you look at our amplifiers, we're traditionally fairly conservative in the design. This one is uh, a little more bold in that respect. And I think all of those details combined, historical elements, 
some drama with the new design it makes a really special amplifier, unlike anything we've ever done before. Well, and I did want to touch on the glass top panel because, you know, just for for the sake of of, of history here, since we're talking about that, I owned a 332 uh, way back in the day. Gosh, that, that had to be 20 years plus ago. And I remember a manufacturer telling me one time we were discussing Mark Levinson products and he used a term that I had not heard applied to audio circuitry before, but it was he was being extremely complimentary of Mark Levinson and he said that the 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 internals, the circuit boards, it was done with surgical precision. And that always stuck with me because I remember looking into Mark Levinson products and just seeing the cleanest circuitry, just a beautiful layout. There was never anything. There was never solder flux all over the boards. And it, it, they, they just looked perfect. And so I think it's a great move. You know, I mean, you know, let's face it. We're buying performance, but we're buying a thing that creates that performance. So I think that that thing should be done at the very highest levels. And uh, so I, I really personally appreciate the glass top. I think that's really cool. And I think a lot of the audio nuts like myself would enjoy uh, that aspect of it. Yeah, for sure. I, th I that surgical precision. I think that's a pretty uh, pretty good way to describe it. It's you know we we refer to the current circuit design. Our pure path uh, circuit design is uh, fairly minimalist, and I, that is one thing that is very obvious when you pull a top cover. We don't have you know leads and cables that are flying about through the insides of it. Everything is short pass. Everything is point to point. Uh, there aren't uh, cables in there. If there is a connection from one thing to another, uh, it's either through a bus bar or through a, a direct connection on that board. So it does make for a very clean product. Um, and while they are beautiful, of course, when you look at this and you see the internal symmetry of the designs, right? They they are left right uh, symmetrical, sometimes front to rear, but typically that uh, it creates a very beautiful design. But it's while we pay a lot of attention to that, it's all done in the name of performance. So when the engineering team is laying out these board designs, they are doing it to optimize the performance in the highest possible way. Keep things that are noisy away from things that are quiet, uh, create short paths between capacitors, power supplies, things like that. So it results in something very beautiful, but it begins with a state-of-the-art circuit design for the highest possible performance. So I think it's a great thing to show off in a glass top, just the perfect way to do it. Now, Jim, can you tell me, I've got a couple more questions. Can you tell me the power output? I don't think we hit upon that. Yeah, so uh, we, we talked a lot about the look of the product. It's, it's a very beautiful product. From the performance of it, we base the design off our current number 536, which is the best amplifier that we have in the range, considered really, I think, um, by a lot uh, to be one of the best amplifiers on the market. So we knew... We were starting with a with a remarkable product in that state, but we wanted to kind of push it uh, a little further. We did want to go back historically as well and kind of look backwards and say, you know, what were some of the things about those earlier amplifiers? So some of the changes that were made, um, we increased the capacitance of the amplifier. So the module itself has been upgraded uh, at least uh, two locations, one in the, in the uh, uh, pre-driver circuitry, but also in the output stages of these. So that gave it not only more dynamic power, uh, but also a little more power overall. Um, we also ramped up the bias, uh, so we're getting uh, lower distortion. Uh, some of the other changes in there are to lower the noise floor in it so that we can improve that performance. As, as big as some of these power numbers are in these amplifiers, you're, that's more dynamic or headroom capable. And, you know, unless you're in a larger home with no neighbors, you're not going to be able to really push it to its, uh, its limits anyway. So we do a lot of our listening at lower levels. So with the increased bias on this, if you look at a number 536, that's around four watts or so of class A output capability that it operates in. This one is gonna be closer to about 20 watts. So about four times as much power. And that, again, kind of a nod back to the ML2, which was a 25 watt class A amplifier. Um, and uh, so we have that, and then the overall power in the Class A B rating. This will be about four and a quarter, uh, and it will effectively double as you have the impedance. So when you go into a four ohm load, about 850 watts, and it's two ohm stable. But you're going to get to the point where you're running out of wall current <laughs> before it to continue to make power. 
Um, so the numbers are impressive, right? This is literally an amplifier that could drive any loudspeaker on the market, regardless of size or price or the complexity of its, uh, of its drive nature, if you will. Uh, we, of course, make some loudspeakers that are easy to drive. We make some that are complex to drive. Uh, and so uh, this thing was kind of developed with that in mind, that it would be really uh, loudspeaker agnostic. You could put about anything you want off the back of it, and it's going to make them sound absolutely gorgeous. Uh, that's fantastic. So the next question that I have, the, the logical conclusion to this interview is, how do they sound? What, what, do you, what do you hear when you listen to them? How do they compare with, with other Levinson products of the past? Tell us about them. Uh, it's a beautiful amplifier. Um, we've not had a lot of time listening with these yet because we are uh, at the earlier stages of the development. We've just got a couple of prototype pairs of these that are here. But in listening to them, again, you, we're kind of jumping off from the number 536. When you listen to that amplifier, you're, you're listening through it, right? It is the goal of an amplifier, of course, to amplify the signal and just make it bigger, but and not really add anything of its own nature. You know, our brand typically, we're known for being fairly neutral. We don't add a lot of sonic character to it. We're trying to just make that pure signal path and have it come out just bigger on the other end, right? And let you see through the clearest possible window to the music. That's what you get here with this amplifier. It is crystal clear in, in terms of all of the details and everything that you have there, but it is also effortlessly dynamic. Um, and that's one of the things that I really love about it is dynamics are what makes music sound real. And you get a lot of electronics that, that can be, you know, very clean or accurate from that standpoint. But if you don't have that dynamic capability, to me, that's where you start to lose some of the realism. If you're, I'm a musician, I have been my whole life, and that's what I've grown up around. I know what anything and everything sounds like when it's being played live. And live music is very dynamic. And that's something that you get out of this that to me, you know, when you sit down in front of a really good hi-fi system, you don't want to hear a hi-fi system. You want to hear the musicians. And I know everybody's like the cliche, you know, music the way the artist intended, but that's really the ultimate goal of what we're trying to do is to get rid of the hi-fi system and have a live music performance in front of you. And that takes dynamics. It takes clarity. It takes detail. Uh, that sound staging and being able to see, close your eyes, where are the artists on the stage? How de deep is it front to back? And all of those details just become so clear. When you listen to this product, it, to me, it is just kind of opening up the window and it's, it's just reveals all of the inner detail, the power, uh, the precision, it's, it's all there. And it, it's just, it's one of those things where when you start listening, Pretty soon you're digging into the catalog going, okay, now I want to hear what this sounds like. Oh, now I want to hear what this sounds like. And my gosh, I've never heard that detail before. I didn't even realize that that little detail or that nuance was there because I've never been on a system that was able to reveal it before. And that's where the magic happens. Well, Jim, I think you just effectively whet the appetite of every audiophile all around the world <laughs> that, that sees this video because that, you know, your description, it sounds, uh, sounds fantastic. Well, I guess... The, the last thing, I know you've got the, the ML50 right there behind you. Would you mind taking the webcam and maybe giving us a little yeah. visual tour right here at the end? I know. I'm sure that everyone, as they've been watching this video, is sitting here and go, all I can see is the handle. Just move out of the way. <laughs> so, yeah, let me uh, give you a quick look here at this piece. I'm going to fire it up so the lights are going on it. It is, I've got my office lights on, so uh, not quite as much as you can see. But yeah, let me uh, give you a quick tour of this, and you can see some of the details that we talked about in the design and how we were able to incorporate some of the older uh, details of it. So obviously, as you can see from the front panel, uh, we talked about the handles. That's probably the most obvious thing. They are functional. Uh, they do have kind of the same sort of angled look that was uh, seen on the number 20. So that's a great piece there. Uh, they are very functional, so it's a great way to get your hand uh, in here and lift them up uh, because that's where all the bulk of the, the weight is, is in the front of it. Um, you can, of course, see the glass front panel here as the, that's a, a tie back to the number 53. Uh, I know it's kind of blowing out on here, but that is a beautiful red uh, Mark Levinson logo here, the new power button. Uh, this particular one has a white light ring on it, but they will be red uh, for the brand uh, once we're in there. 
Here's the foot design. So when you can kind of see what's going on there, you can see these come all the way out to the edge of the product. Uh, and that is really a, a, a tie back again to the 300 series, the 33s and whatnot. Uh, and underneath it, I'm not sure I can actually show that underneath there, but there is this vibration uh, isolation foot design in here. So this inner part of the foot is mechanically isolated from the rest of the foot. So effectively uh, uh, isolating the entire chassis from the surface it's on. Um, we talked about this part of it. Uh, this is the, the sexy bit up here. This is where we've got the glass top panel. So you can see there's an incredibly large uh, toroidal power supply up here at the front. It's got a, a new label. So we went with a black and red theme. Typically they're black with this uh, silver uh, text and, and uh, a ring around them. And then you can kind of see in there, I know it's kind of hard to, to get through here, but uh, this allows you to see the inner beauty of the circuit design. Uh, we had to change the top panel venting a little bit, and I think that turned out really well. Um, of course, because normally there would be uh, vent uh, holes right through the center of the unit. Now that it's glass here, we did this twin channel vent design. So there's one that runs down each side and they kind of, as you're looking at where the handle moves in and then they just kind of run straight front to back. So you've got that twin channel vent design that flanks the glass panel. Um, so, and as you can see here too, you know, our, our design philosophy with these products, you notice there's no visible fasteners anywhere. This looks like it's hewn from a solid billet of aluminum. Uh, so there's a lot of effort that goes into the design of that. Even little details here that you see on the heat sinks. Uh, we've got a triple fin heat sink design. Um, this is found also on all the 500 series amps, but it's just another little detail. You know, when you, when you look at the product, start noticing all the things that go into the design. Just a really a beautiful amplifier. Um, I can't really get around to the back of the unit to show you, but uh, there are dual sets of uh, binding posts on the back. Of course, our balanced input and an RCA uh, input as well on the back. And then uh, you will have the ability in production if you want to shut off the lighting. Um, we'll have the ability to, to turn off the lighting on it as well. But I think it, uh, again, really, uh, <laughs> to use the pun again, amps up the uh, quality of the unit to have that lighting and a little bit more drama in this. I just think it's a really uh, beautiful amplifier. I'm, I'm very proud of the team and what they've been able to accomplish with this. Well, Jim, thank you so much for the tour of the ML50. And, you know, I would say that if you don't have your order in, you know, now would probably be a good time if you want a pair of ML50s brand new and not wait for a used pair 10 years from now. It would be a good time to get to get your pair. Uh, but no, thank you. Thank you so much for the tour. And uh, we look forward to that amplifier coming out and um, and the other the other, you know, the headphones as well, which we will have. A review on soundstagesolo.com. I do understand that we have a set uh, coming. And uh, Jim, I think that's it. I really appreciate your time and I want you to have a, a great rest of your week. Uh, thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed a little additional insight into how we created the ML50. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.